When Emily went to the hospital in an ambulance, they put a yellow band on her wrist. She didn't realize it because she was confused. Later, her husband, who was a doctor, saw the band and knew it was important. He called the police right away. When the police came, the hospital staff didn't want to let them in. They thought it was going too far. Emily's husband didn't care about breaking the rules because he wanted to know the truth about his wife. Finally, the hospital let Emily's husband, Michael, see her. He saw she still had the yellow band on. He couldn't believe the doctors made such a big mistake. They were risking Emily's life. Michael proved to the doctors they made a mistake, but there was a worry that he might have been too late. Why did Emily get a yellow band instead of a red one? What did it mean? And why did Michael call the police? Michael got the call that his wife Emily was transported to the hospital by his neighbor. She was also the one that called the ambulance in the first place when she got the feeling that something strange was going on at their house. The neighbor normally saw Emily at least twice a day when she was walking the dog. But that day she had not seen her once and she got suspicious. But when she rang the doorbell, the woman quickly figured out that something was very wrong here. The dog started to bark loudly and jumped against the door, but Emily did not come to the door. The neighbor's bad feeling got stronger by the second and she decided to walk around the house, peeking through the windows. Emily was on the ground in the kitchen. She was not moving and not reacting to the neighbor banging on the window. The woman quickly called an ambulance and they were on the scene within minutes. The neighbor started calling Michael, Emily's husband. At this point, and the only information the ambulance personnel could give her was that Emily was still alive, and she herself had seen that Emily was given a yellow wristband. He was so freaked out that he had not even heard the neighbor mentioning the yellow wristband. When he was called, Michael was actually on his way to pick up their kids and drive them home. He picked up the kids from school and actually brought them to his parents' house. He gave them the excuse that he had to take care of some grown-up business and that they would have to spend the rest of the afternoon and evening at the grandparents. He tried to call ahead to the hospital as well, but all they could tell him was that Emily had arrived there. Luckily, he was almost at the hospital, and then he would have the opportunity to find everything out for himself. At least, that is what he hoped. Michael was actually relatively familiar with the hospital, and he hoped that this would help him get around some of the red tape relatives often had to face. He was a general practitioner himself, and often had contact with the hospital before transferring patients to them. The hospital did everything very by the book and that meant you had to sign a lot of documents when wanting to see somebody in critical condition and Michael desperately wanted to avoid that. Michael was happy that he seemed like his reputation seemed to help him here. At least, that is what he thought. He had to wait in the room for a little bit which gave him time to think about the situation and he suddenly remembered a detail from the call with the neighbor. He was unsure if he had even heard it correctly, but he believed that she had said something to him about a yellow wristband. Normally patients who were admitted like that would get a red wristband. He had seen it a lot with patients that he directed to the hospital. When he went to visit them, they would nearly always wear a red wristband. He had only seen the yellow one a couple of times with very specific patients, and he was sure Emily did not fall into that category. Or did the doctors here know something he didn't? Now that he had gotten this realization, Michael was even more desperate to see his wife. He had waited here almost 10 minutes by now and still, nobody had come to see him. Outside his door, there were two security guards who were not going to let him pass. Michael was ready to become furious at them, but that was of no use. Michael was completely baffled by this treatment. He had been working with this hospital for a long time, but he had never heard of anybody being watched like this. He was on the phone with the police quickly and Michael managed to convince them to send a squad car out. Michael had told them the truth about the situation and the officer who answered the call sounded very surprised about the hospital's approach. He started shouting out of the window as hard as he could that they needed to help him. Everybody who was around to hear it looked up in surprise and within seconds the security guards had stormed in, most likely to shut him up. They knew that the police had seen and heard Michael and they were going to have to answer them. But it was not like they knew anything about the situation as the security guards were just sent here to make sure that Michael did not leave. The officers were already talking to somebody that Michael immediately recognized as one of the directors of the hospital and a head doctor that Michael had to deal with by far the most when he directed patients to this hospital. One of the officers asked Michael to give his account of the situation. 
He was a bit reluctant at first as he just wanted to see his wife as soon as possible, but the officers insisted. The officer ordered that Michael be brought to his wife and a nurse immediately came over to assist. Michael apparently thought that the hospital staff liked him a lot more than they actually did. They did not like him at all and you could even say they hated him. In their eyes, he was a useless middleman that just cost them money. If he did not exist, patients would just come directly to them for help. This was also the reason that the hospital was not that eager to help Michael avoid standard procedures. Apparently, it had nothing to do with Michael's knowledge about the hospital and the yellow and red wristbands. The officers had asked the directors about that as well, and they just raised an eyebrow at them. They had no idea what wristband Emily was wearing, and they failed to see the relevance of this as well. Michael had a lot of things to work out with the hospital, and that much was very clear to him. But all of that had to wait as the health of his wife very much had priority here. By now the nurse had brought them to the room his wife was supposedly waiting in. When Michael opened up the door, tears immediately came to his eyes. There was his wife Emily, peacefully sleeping in bed, not looking all too elegant, but that was Emily down. And then he saw that she was still wearing that same damn yellow wristband. He turned to the nurse and told them that they had to have made a mistake by putting that on her. She needed to check it again and the nurse had no problem looking Emily up in the system to verify their decision. And wouldn't you know, they had actually made a big mistake. The yellow wristband is given to new patients that come in without having insurance. And what makes mistakes here really dangerous is that patients without insurance are actually not immediately treated. If they have life-threatening injuries or illnesses, this could of course quickly spell disaster. Luckily, the nurses checked Emily's health and found out she wasn't really sick. She just fainted, probably because she didn't drink enough water. Sometimes, Emily forgets to drink, especially on hot days like this. The nurses gave her fluids through an IV to hydrate her. Soon, she woke up feeling better and was ready to leave the hospital. Michael felt relieved and his anger towards the hospital eased. They talked openly about their relationship and how to make it better. They found some things they agreed on and made decisions they both liked. Emily recovered completely in the end.